You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. MyAx is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's Volatility Reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means two things. First, I am back in the Chicago studio, back from the Southern studio here. We escaped the blizzard, the vortex that was shutting down all flights, apparently, throughout the eastern region of the country. Somehow made it through unscathed. It was, it was amazing. Made it back here to the Chicago studios just in time to bring you the final volatility views of this mad, insane, topsy-turvy year. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com. I want to welcome all the new folks. We've had listeners, obviously, for the full decade-plus run, but we know, looking at the numbers, there are new folks discovering the content and, indeed, the show every month, including last month, November, was quite a banger. I haven't run the numbers yet for December, but it's looking on par for yet another record month here. So welcome to all you new folks out there. Of course, if you do like what you hear, and you're on the on-demand side, one of our legion of on-demand listeners, all we ask is that you rate and review it on your platform of choice. It really does help. Clearly, the legion of new folks continue to discover the content out there. If you're on a platform that won't allow reviews, then, of course, head on over to the App Store, where we can find our app. A lot of people like to leave their reviews there as well. And, of course, if you want more in your lives, and hey, who doesn't? Including, let's say, you don't want your year to end with volatility views, you want, let's say, an options oddities in your life where we break down some awesome, unusual options activity for today and for the year. And we've been doing so all year long, as well as access to all of the awesome pro Q&As we've done for the entirety of this year and indeed most of last year. There's nearly 200 episodes up there now. There's only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro or for you cool cats out there slash secret club. Head on over there. Click on the link. And join the ever fun partake course gives you live access to this, everything else we do, and also enters you in the drawing to win our awesome giveaways coming up. Today is the last day to be entered into the prize pool for the December Pro Trading Crate. Just look on our Twitter if you want to see the stuff people are winning. They're quite giddy. So you want to be giddy like them, the optionsinsider.com slash pro. And we ran the numbers coming into the end of the year, listeners. We looked at all of our guests and their records for the crystal ball. And we'll reveal 
the tallies at the end of the show here. But it became readily apparent that there was only one guest who could join us here on the final show. He had the best tally amongst all of our guests for volatility crystal ball bullseyes <laughs> on the show here he, with a whopping two, which is a lot for someone who's only on the show we, not that frequently. So I'm pleased to welcome in to the MyX hot seat this week, our old friend, Mr. Matt Ambertson from Orats, though we know him around here as the Oracle of New Hampshire, as his vol prognostication record reinforces. Mr. Matt, welcome to your prize, sir. You get to be on the final volatility views of 2022. Congratulations, sir. That's uh, an honor, Mark. Uh, I didn't know that, so that's exciting. Um, you know, I love the show because it, it disciplines you to make a call. And so, uh, you know, the first couple ones that I got, first shows that I was on, I was like, I don't know. And then I started, okay, we could we could do this. We could look at some of our numbers and, and try to figure this out. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun. So I'm, uh, I'll take that prize. It's great to be with you. Uh, Pretty quiet here in O-Rats land, although it's been a very busy, uh, busy year and, and looking forward to uh, taking the opportunity to look back on, on the year and, and uh, see what we're, we've got for next year. Should be a fun opportunity. Our usual compatriots, the Rock Lobster and the greasiest of meatballs. I'm not a monster. They are on their well-deserved end of year holiday vacations. We will, of course, get their prognostications next week for the end of year crystal ball which is going on right now fast and furious if you haven't weighed in over there at options that is the place to go we'll also pay off your prognostications for those of you who were listening last year we'll see if any fabulous prizes were won but now it is time to get to it listeners the final volatility review for 2022 <laughs> It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Volatility Review. Like I said, the final one for this mad, insane year that was 2022. If you were hoping for a little bit of Santa Claus rally, a little bit of green on the screen to bring us into the new year, then looks like you're going to be disappointed. The major indices are red yet again here to close out the year. Listeners, S&P off about three quarters of a percent right now as we're kicking off the show here. Dow off about six tenths of a percent. A NASDAQ, as it has been wont to do all year, leading the charge to the dark side off about almost 0.9%, about 0.85, somewhere in that range, bouncing around right now. Of course, on the year, the story has been decidedly red. SPX off in the neighborhood of 20%. NASDAQ off over a third with today's sell-off out there now. So it has been very much a blood red year out there. Hopefully, for all of our longtime listeners, you folks... We're able to at least stem the bleeding, take advantage of some of the strategies and techniques we discuss, not just on this show, but every show on the network, uh, to mitigate the bleeding, take advantage of some opportunities. And we said it many times, you can't just ride the elevator up and then ride it back down. Otherwise, you gave away a third of your value if you were in the NASDAQ this year. That's a huge hit. That's a body blow. Once you ride it up, you have to have some plan for what happens when things start to sputter out and maybe the elevator starts to go down. And whether that's getting out altogether it's the most basic way, of course, but can be effective in a year like this. You just made 33% in the NASDAQ or, of course, all the various mitigation techniques we talk about, buying puts and put spreads, selling calls, doing collars, upside VIX calls and verticals, the garbage, all oh, Matt's garbage. Maybe we'll get to some more <laughs> garbage, garbage VIX calls, garbage spy puts, all sorts of fun. There are many different ways to do that, listeners, but a lot of fun to be had and a lot of a lot of challenges along the way as well. So hopefully you folks out there all feared well. We expect our listeners to be a cut above out there. So hopefully you guys did better than what the numbers are showing us for the year on the major indexes. Getting into the vol landscape, which is, of course, our purview here on the show. A little bit of a different story. Spikes kicking off the show at about a 22 and a half. That's up about exactly a point from where it was on this show last week. And of course... The trajectory for spikes and indeed vol for this year has been 
a very weird one. We kicked off Spikes and VIX for the year. They hit their lows for the year pretty much right out of the gate. They launched on January 3rd, and that was pretty much their lows for the year. They never looked back. In the case of Spikes, we launched at right around 16 and three quarters on January 3rd, and that was pretty much the low for the year. As, of course, right now we're at about 22 and a half, so a wee bit north of that. We hit our high for the year not much later, 3648. That was on March 7th, so obviously a few weeks after the invasion kicked off there. And then the rest of the year has been ambling somewhere in between those two goalposts out there. So uh, a crazy year indeed. Uh, VIX, a very similar story at about a 22 when we kicked off the show. That's up not even a full point, up about eight tenths of a point from where it was this time last week. In terms of the year, again, a very similar trajectory. Kicked off the year at its lows, 1634 for VIX. I hit its high on the same day, March 7, 3645, so almost the exact same level as Spikes, which is kind of eerie as well. Uh, intriguing stuff there. You don't see a lot of years where VIX comes in meekly and then roars its way up and then kind of ends the year somewhere in between. VVIX, so the Vol of Vol, a very different story there. We came into this year kind of roaring like a lion. We were well north of triple digits. Coming into today, of course, we're at a 78, down one point from last week. We're just a day or two removed from setting the low for the year, which was 76.13. That was just a couple of days ago we set that out there. So ball of vol, it's getting squeezed to death. Of course, it is that time of year. It's a seasonal time, which makes it all that more interesting that we came into the year last year with so much vol of vol. We opened the year at 109.31, listeners. Uh, we topped out. Just a few weeks later, on January 24th, so not in February with the invasion, not even in March, not even in some of the sell-offs you saw later in the year. The, the apex for Vol of Vol was a whopping 173. And that came on January 24th, listeners. So we were well into the triple digits for much of the first half of this year. We didn't break 100. Remember, that was a big story when VVIX broke 100, that we didn't really break it and close below it until May 25th. Much of the first half of the year, we were north of triple digits. Of course, now we're hanging out at 78. If past is prologue, we're not going to hang out at 78 for too much longer. But then again, who knows in these mad, insane years. Uh, the Viking, our other measure of vol of vol. Uh, an interesting story as well. That one obviously has a shorter path behind it. It only launched a little over a year ago. Right now, it's at about a 93. That puts it down eight points from where it was this time last show. It's all-time low came not in the last week, but actually back in October, October 28th. It hit a 57 in about a quarter. So that was this year low and the all-time low for the product. It's high, they set same day, January 24th, 204.31. So we are obviously much closer to the low than to the high out there in V-Spikes out there right now. All right, Matt, that's a long way around. A lot of table setting to getting into what's lighting it up. We'll start with what's lighting up your tape here. In the final week of the year, then we can expand our discussion to other fun topics. Yeah, that is a lot, Mark. Um, <clears throat> and it's you know it's been an interesting year, and we're in an, an interesting uh, part of the of this uh, market. As as I've talked before, I, you know I think we are in a bear market, um, and I, I don't just look at it you know twenty percent down. I'm just I'm looking at it, it from a where is this thing going? And I you know I start with the fundamentals and I and you know with these interest rate rises uh, you know what tends to happen is when the Fed plateaus that's when the recession starts so if you look back uh, uh, Reuters has a good story on it but if you look back 2000 uh, right when they plateaued at the end of the plateau uh, the recession started 2007 2008, uh, so from 2004 to 2006, they they uh, upped the rates from like one percent to five percent, plateaued. It came down to about four and a half, and the recession started. Um, I think what's going to happen is we're going to see that uh, we're going to plateau. We're going to see a recession. Uh, so I think we're 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 pretty going to be. If we're not in it now, we're going to be in it pretty pretty shortly. And what I think is going going to go. What's going to happen is, you know, typically in recessions, the P.E. ratio gets to about 15. And also after a large rate hikes, that affects earnings negatively. 
sometimes down, I don't know, 10%. So that gets us to about 200 in earnings times 15 PE is 3,000. So that's where I, that's my target spend there since, I don't know, uh, it seems like about three months ago. Um, and so what, what I think, what I think is real interesting is, is it, it's kind of the most anticipated bear market, you know, uh, you know, P uh, put call ratios. Uh, although Henry had a good article on the put call ratios that we could touch on later if you want. Uh, uh, you know, everyone, everyone is just already positioned for this. And, uh, the weirdest thing in the market right now is the, uh, the skew or the slope is very shallow, meaning calls and puts, uh, have close to the same volatilities, which normally never happens. Um, and so, you know, what's really lighting up for me is that, like, I think that's the story of, uh, of the market, like the, the slope we usually measure it in, you know, how much percent for every 10 deltas more in the money. So it's usually about nine, uh, eight and a half or 9% for the SPY. And it got as, you know, now it's, it's trending about three. So, and it's, and it has not been this low since we started measuring it, uh, back in 2007 and presenting it. So, um, interesting for a bear market that it's, it, it, the the skew is that that's shallow and when we're getting these sell-offs the, the vix is not really participating meaning uh it's not going up and not providing a lot of protection um the vix in 2022 never got above 40 uh, if i'm looking at this chart correctly um got near there but that's pretty uh um that's, that we had a pretty eventful 2022, and, and the VIX never got above 40, uh, and and also it's not getting below 18 and a half. So that's that's the channel that the the VIX has been in um, in in 22. So that's that's uh, that's something to think about. Um, you know, f firstly, you know we're down uh, quite a bit. Uh, over 20% in some of these moves and, you know, the VIX is staying somewhat contained and, but, you know, but it's also kind of contained at a, at a higher level. So this is a different, you know, and we do a lot of back testing. This is a different type of a year. Um, you're, you're seeing, uh, the market when it, when it goes down, um, not going down as quickly, you know, save June. And when it goes up, sometimes we've had some face ripping, uh, rallies, you know, especially like when the Fed, you know, people are trying to guess the, the, what's going on in the Fed. You know, of course, what's more most important now is, is what what is the Fed going to do? And I think now that, that they've stated that they're going to pause or at least slow down, that's taking some of the volatility out of the fixed rate markets, um, fixed income markets. And that has led to, you know, slightly lower volatilities in the equity markets. Uh, and so that we're seeing lower vols in, in the equity markets, even though, you know, the markets, you know, hasn't been performing all that well. So, you know, putting all those things together and then also earnings are a lot more important, and especially with uh, companies uh, predicting their, their future performance uh, is going to be big, especially in this upcoming earnings. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of downgrades uh, and a lot of negatives. Uh, earnings projections, and then I think um, I think uh, really the April earnings uh, is going to be uh, pretty bad, pretty bloody, um, and and then after that uh, the recession goes. Who knows how long it's going to go? But I think that that's when we're going to find out a lot. So you know that's what I'm seeing in the market right now. Mark, it's a, it, it is strange. It's definitely a lot different from this from the uh, you know the bullish market that we've had since 2008 essentially. Uh, it's a lot, it, it's different now. Um, a lot of the back tests that we've done, um, that have performed well in 2022 are the strategies that performed well in 2007, 2008, 2018, the, 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 the bad years. So, um, you know, definitely a different market condition right now. Um, again, I think we're going to see some, you know, still see some, uh, I think, uh, what is it disciplined or contained selling into next year 
uh, you know, just because everyone's so well positioned for it. So many people have puts. Uh, and we could talk about how to how to still protect yourself when uh, the volatility is relatively high in the VIX. Um, and it's not really going to kick up as much as, as you would expect in a, in a bull market. Um, you know, when, when it when the bull market goes down, the volatility really kicks up. In this type of a market, everyone's so positioned, they're kind of selling into it. So you got to do some, some, some different strategies. So, so that's what I'm, I'm seeing in the market markets. You know, a lot, a lot of moving parts. It's, it's, uh, it's complex, but uh, that's what I'm seeing. Well, you mentioned some of those interesting trends and moving parts out there in the market this year. There are a lot of those trends to dissect. You kind of just hit on one. So let maybe we'll start there. It's this notion, as you put it, you know, we had a very eventful year and VIX never got above 40 this year. That really seemed to resonate with a lot of people this year. We saw this persistent drumbeat across the board, ball, twit, financial media, everywhere, somewhere along the lines of, you know, is the VIX broken? Is the VIX not really responding to the stimuli and what's going on out there in the market right now? In fact, right now, as we speak, Matt, today, we're recording this last trading day of the year, December 30th. This morning, an article on Market Watch, did 2022 break Wall Street's fear gauge why the VIX no longer reflects the sorry state of the stock market. So this has been a persistent drumbeat for most of the year, Matt, and it continues right now as we speak. Major outlets still running with this. And people, I think it's fair to say, whether rightly or wrongly, they expected more from the VIX this year. They expected more in the Frequent sell-offs we saw out there, sharp 2+, plus, 3% plus plus sell-offs we saw out there, days when the VIX never really budged. And so moments when you have VIX on to capture those types of events, it didn't really perform as a lot of people expected and or wanted. So I'm curious for you, Matt, you, you pointed this out as one of your trends you've noticed from this year as well. But what are your thoughts about that basic question do you think the VIX is broken, sir, as they are postulating yet again this morning on Market Watch? Well, the VIX is the VIX, and it's, um, you know it wasn't designed for anything. It was designed for um, being the VIX, <laughs> and so you, you know you just have to understand what's going on in the market. And, and I think you know, like I said, was talking about before, you know, people are so positioned for this sell-off, uh, and you guys, there's just so much bearish sentiment out there that I, you know I got you know not as bearish as I was because it's just, you know, people are just, you know, buying puts, buying VIX calls. Uh, and, you know, I think that, that, that has a, uh, that has a confounding effect to VIX really responding the way people expect it to, to respond. You know, as if everyone owns VIX calls, when it starts going up, they start selling instead of like in a bull market where they don't really expect it. And they're short those calls. They got to cover, and that's what what really squeezes and gets the market going. Like what happened, you know, during COVID, and it just you know people just had to buy it at whatever levels. Now they have it, and they let, they're letting it go and, and, and keeping a cap on. So, um, you know, I mean, I think it's it's good in the sense that it's uh, uh, you know containing the market a bit, but it's bad for those people who have those traditional. Uh, hedges on that where they think the VIX is going to perform a certain way. Um, and that's basically, I think what people are, are hand wringing about They're They're saying, Hey, you know, we expect the VIX to do this. It's not doing it. It's broken. Well, you have to look at, at, at some other things. And, and, and so what we've been talking about now for many months is, is, you know, in this bear market, when uh, people are, are long uh, out of the money puts, when people are long out of the money calls in VIX, uh, puts in 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 S and P related. Uh, you're, you're not going to get the uh, the pops in volatility. So your strategies that you use are going to have to uh, consider that. Uh, so n now when you're hedging, you know we, uh, we I've been doing more calendars, meaning you know I'm long long away out of the money put uh, in an S and P product, and then short. Um, a shorter dated, maybe even a diagonal slightly higher strike. Um, and then, you know, so that uh, it doesn't cost as much. And as the market, because you know, when you have that type of a position on, you want the market to drift down 
to your uh, to your strikes. And the overall longer term, you want that volatility to hold, which it usually does. But that front month volatility, you don't want it to spike, and that's what it's not doing. So that's that's why I, I like that type of a, of a position. You know, a put calendar, put diagonal out of the money uh, on the spy products because uh, you, you know it it it. it it reacts to what we're seeing, you know, quote unquote, the broken VIX. So, uh, you know, I don't think the VIX is broken. It's it, it's behaving as, uh, it, you know, with supply and demand and how, how market participants are uh, positioned in the market right now. Uh, but, but but people need to listen to the show and then uh, and uh, act accordingly. The, the old, uh, you know, what we used to beat the table about was way out of the money, long puts, and that doesn't really... Uh, work as well in a in a time when the market is not really uh, blowing up volatility when the market goes down. So it's a different market. It's not broken. It's just different. So that's the way I look at it, Mark. Well, you touch on the other part of that conversation. Whenever you're talking about the old is VIX broken conversation, you have to hit on the other part, which is pretty much the other big story, the other big trend for vol and VIX of 2022, which is this is the year of VIX upside. And what I mean by it is not VIX performance to the upside. We just talked about how it didn't even break 40 this year. Talking about VIX upside positioning in the in the options. <laughs> I've been doing this show for a long time, as you mentioned, over a decade now. And I'm hard-pressed to think of any other year. And VIX, since its inception, has always been a call-dominated product. That's kind of the way it was designed. If you're coming to VIX, you're coming to play that explosive upside and you get that in the calls. That's just the way the product works. So it's always going to be call biased. But what we saw this year was was something different, not just overall volume, but the degree out of the money is something I've never seen before. You know, we used to laugh on the show. We used to joke about February. February seemed like that was when the crazies came out and they would come in, they would load up on what seemed like at the time outlandish strikes, 70 and 75. Oh my goodness. If someone ever touched the pars, it was worthy of note and conversation on the show because it was so rare. Uh, We stopped talking about that stuff a lot towards the second half of this year because it became so commonplace. I mean, the 70s were comparatively normal. That was the low strike we saw for a lot of the upside this year. There were 70s, 75s, 80s, 85s, pars, 115s, 125s, you name it. The the out-of-the-money call strikes just had a life of their own and one that I've I've never really seen before. And I think to Matt's point, I do think that played a role in this other debate out there, the quote unquote is VIX broken debate when everyone and their mother and every fund is loaded up to the gills on all the ridiculous upside you could possibly imagine. <laughs> It's going to play with the way VIX responds as a result. I'm just looking at the numbers right now for the year, listeners. And we started off the year looking at just this is just call open interest now. We started off the year and around the levels you might expect. In fact, we hit our low for call open interest very early in the year, January 20th. And that's reflected, like I said, this shift. There was this paradigm shift. I wish I could point my finger at exactly what the catalyst was. Was it a research paper? Was it an event, a conference? It seemed like something really just sparked the imagination of a lot of funds this year to want to pile into the upside of VIX in all sorts of ways, not just buying the upside outright, but as we've seen the one by threes and the one by fives and all sorts of other ratios as ways to do it out there. So we hit our low for call open interest on January 20th right around 3.6 million contracts open on the call front, and then never looked back, hit our high for the year, nearly 9 million contracts, 8.9 million contracts. That was a little over a month ago on November 16th. So there were many times in the past where VIX total open interest wasn't even 9 million contracts. So to have that many just in the calls, again, just reflects what a paradigm shift we had between January and the end of the year. Uh, So intriguing stuff out there. Uh, Matt, you just touched on this as well. This has been a frequent talking point for you and I as well. It's been the rise of the garbage VIX calls and, of course, their counterpart, the the garbage spy puts. I know you've been investing a lot of effort and analysis over that ORACH into the, the garbage end of the spectrum. So maybe we can have a, a second name for this year, not just 
not just the year of Vic's upside, but the rise of Vic's garbage. What do you think, Matt? What are your thoughts on this just explosion of upside? Everyone had to have it this year in Vic's. Well, you know, I love those, Mark. Um, I, well, I don't love them as much now for the reasons that I... You're all about, about the garbage. That's why we have you on the show, sir. Yeah, I love the garbage. But, it, it, you know, before when, you know, when I was beating the drum about these is the, the VIX doesn't have to go up, um, you know, to the, that strike. So if you're buying the 70, it doesn't... It, but if it, all it needs to do is make it some type of a pop and you've doubled your money. So that's why I love those. And they, and they don't decay. Usually, you know, you but you could buy them out a couple months, and they don't cost that much. They don't decay that much, and you buy them when the market's quiet, and then when it pops, it really pops. So that's what I really liked about it. You know, unfortunately, like what we were talking about earlier, uh, you, you know, you asked what what happened. I think you know we've been talking about it, Mark. So let's take some credit for uh, the garbage puts. <laughs> it's all us. Here. We we talked up the garbage <laughs> phenomenon here. We are to blame. Yeah, I do think that did play a part in. The muting of VIX, call it what you will, this year, because we, we've never seen it to this degree. So, of course, we're going to have some unanticipated consequences. Speaking of unanticipated consequences, we can't get out of talking about trends for the year, Matt, without talking about one of the biggest, most explosive ones that really just came on in the last half of this year, really the last quarter of this year, is where this really just transformed everything. And we're talking about this whole explosion of zero DTE trading in SPX. Now, we've had it before. We've had effectively dailies in SPX for a while. We're just missing a couple of expirations. Uh, they added those this year, and that just seemed to be just the, the catalyst that awakened everyone to the joys of just trading nothing but zero DTE flies and verticals and whatever the heck else floats their boat out here. We've had the meatball on the show many times saying he almost exclusively trades those now just because he loves the notion of going home without a position at the end of the day. Uh, we've had the flow master on the network. He's been very much on the front end, the front line of the data on this stuff. And he's been saying the, the volume in these zero DTE contracts is enormous and it's, it's transforming the product, but also it's a huge amount of retail playing in SPX, which in and of itself is interesting because it's not really a retail product, but also funds are now getting into, institutions are getting into the zero DTE phenomenon, which is usually far outside their purview. They're looking much farther down the term structure than just today. So this is transforming everything, Matt. I, you know, the last time we saw this type of paradigm shift in volume in the SPX, it was you know, nigh on a decade ago, when we saw the big shift from monthlies into weeklies. And it took a while for everyone to come to grips with the impact of that. We saw the cannibalization of the monthlies, that volume shifting to the weeklies. It kind of changed the way monthlies performed as a result. Now we have this next apparent paradigm shift for the market of shifting from the end of week contract into daily contracts. I still don't think we understand the full impact and ramifications of this. In fact, this is probably going to be a story that's going to continue well on into 2023, if not expand. Maybe we'll see some single names start adding a same-day expiration. So this also could be part of that narrative as well, Matt. Maybe the, the unknown part of that narrative of why VIX is performing, quote-unquote, strangely this year. We have the, also this rise of zero DT. I, I know you've been playing around in these a little bit as well. I'm curious for you, A, what are your thoughts on this just this explosion of all things zero DTE towards the end of the year? And more importantly, for this show, how do you think that will play out on the vol front in next year, sir? Yeah, so it, it has this is this is one of the biggest stories of the year. And and I I think it's great. I think that, you know, many people think, oh, they're just gambling, but you know. One of the things that uh, we've transformed our company to get ready for this, and we have these one-minute signal bars now where we used to have just daily signal bars of volatility. So we're watching and tracking and doing you know, relative strength indexes and exponential moving averages of the volatility that we're watching uh, to help predict – uh, movements and where where to trade in the zero DTE. So, you know, it's really compressing a lot of the information that's used to trade 
into now instead of days and end of day, but now they're looking at minutes. And so um, I, I actually think it, it, it's very important because you're, you're, you're getting an assessment of risk for uh, micro uh, uh, or I should say macro uh, announcements. You're seeing, you know, when the how much vol is left during the day. It's really interesting to watch. And it's really interesting, especially when there's an announcement, like a Fed announcement. We could say, oh, it looks like there's a 2% move in the market that's ex expected. And you could get a lot closer because you're looking at the, you know, we do a lot of the same analysis that we do for earnings with the straddles and SPX and, and the other uh, S&P products. Um, and, and as you know, we don't just look at the straddle and say that's the percentage move for the day. We look at the straddle and say, well, uh, what's going to be left over the 2, 2 p.m. announcement? So we still have, a, a, you know, two hours left or something. So, you know, there's a lot of that going on, which which really makes uh, for some interesting analysis. Um, and people are positioning around that. So there's a lot more to this than I think people really uh, are, are realizing. You know, they, they think it's always oh, they're just doing these out of the money um you know, verticals and, and, you know, well, there's a lot more. There's, you know, there's a, a, a bunch of, you know, flies going up. There's a bunch of straddles going up and, and retail can participate because the actual prices are a lot lower. Like, you know, you, you could get a, uh, a small price S, SPX uh, if there's not that much time left. So, um, uh, and, you know, you can watch your risk and, and you're not going to carry a position overnight. So and you're not going to get an exercise because of a dividend and you're not going to, uh, you know, have to deliver, get to the stock delivered. You know, all, all the things that that uh, are problems with, you know, just holding a single stock, uh, they don't apply to the S S SPX. And, you know, XSP is a really good thing to use as well. So, you know, there's a, there, there is a lot going on, Mark. And, you know, we, when we were traders on the floor. You know, expiration day was was chaotic <laughs> because you had to get in, you had to get out. You knew what was going to happen right then. It's not like you're you're carrying these positions, and and you know you could. I, I actually think that there that retail is on a more even playing field when there's this little time left. So for all those reasons, I think that you know retail has taken to it. Uh, other trading firms has taken have taken to it. And, you know, it's definitely here to stay. And I think it's a good thing, Mark. Yeah, it's fascinating. I think we've really only just seen the beginning of this trend. I'm curious for you folks out there, listeners, we've done some questions of the week about this, but what are you guys out there using these zero DTE contracts for? Are you, are you playing with them yet? Are you, have you yet to dip your toes in? If you are hesitating, you're one of the few. It seems like everyone and their mother is trading these things out there right now. So that is definitely the, the trend we have on our radar for 2023. And more importantly for this show, how will that impact volatility? Because there will be some impact. We just need to figure out what it is. There's no free lunch in this business. There's always some unintended consequence when you migrate a ton of volume from one portion of the curve and the term structure to another. There will be some impact. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as everyone and literally their mother and grandmother slinging zero DTE flies <laughs> in SPX. If you had told me at the beginning of the year, that would be a end of the year trend i would have laughed at you but there we go that shows what a topsy-turvy year it was out there we'll get cranking because we're coming up against it and we still have a lot to get to on the show not much going on in the futures to end the year listeners the jam future down about a quarter of a point uh the feb future down about a tenth of a point as we end the year here so not a ton there also not a ton going on in spikes options to end the year i think they're still waiting for a bit of a reset over there to really kick off the next leg of volume out there in spikes land uh, VIX also taking a bit of a break today. As you would expect, it is the final trading day of the year, the end of December, not known to be a bastion of volume on the volatility front. Only 167,000 contracts trading right now. The ADV also going in the wrong direction, back to 517. It's down 32,000 contracts from where it was uh, this time last year. Speaking of VIX volume, Let's look at some other trends we saw from that throughout the year. Uh, the high for volume for the year came very early on. It was back on that January 24th day where we said we also saw the spike for vol of vol 
It was 1.88 million. So closing in on 2 million contract. That's a lot of paper for VIX. That came on January 24th. The low, we're threatening it today, but we're not quite there. We're a little bit above it today. The low came on the other seasonally weak period, the dog days of summer, August 23rd, 159,000 contracts on the tape that day. So uh, intriguing dichotomy there. We hit our volume record pretty much out of the gate this year and never really, never really looked back again. We had a couple other days over a million slightly this year, but it was a challenge this year to even really hit that M handle with any sort of frequency out there. And we had some rocking days in the index this year. So again, another, another notch in that conversation of is VIX muted? Is it different this year? We also didn't see perhaps some of the volume we might have expected on some of those very active days. All right, now coming into the end of the year, the OI obviously light. It's only in the 28th percentile for the year. Everything rolled off the board with expiration a few weeks ago, and no one's really repositioned into the end of the year. The high for open interest was 11.6 million contracts. That came on October 19th. And weirdly enough, the low for open interest came four days before the volume high for the year. It came on January 20th with 5.3 million contracts. So there was only a little over 5 million contracts open in VIX when it printed nearly 2 million contracts. So that is a huge percentage of the OI that it traded in that one day. So talk about dichotomies there, the low for the year of OI, and then four days later, the high for the year for volume, all coming pretty much in the same week. That's an that's a interesting week. Uh, our vol right now out there in VIX, right around a 63, the 30-day vol. That's pretty much as low as we've seen all year as well. It's only in about the eighth percentile. And again, our option volume today is in the one percentile, literally. So we are hanging out at the lows. If you're wondering as well, we don't talk about a lot about put call out here, but if you're wondering the VIX put call, we were just talking about how call heavy it was this year. Uh, the put call low came this summer, July 6, 0.17. So that's kind of interesting, a little bit of a different time from when we saw the peak in call open interest, which was in November. And then the high for the VIX put call came at nearly a two, 1.92. That was on August 29th. So that was when we were kind of kicking into that second leg of that rally out there. People were loving themselves some VIX puts out there. As of right now, looking at the top 10 in VIX land, a nine calls, one puts. It's been that way for pretty much all month, and it remains that way to end the year. The only put is coming in at number 10, 107,000 of the June 15 puts. My favorite strike. I have a few of those in my back pocket for a rainy day. We've talked about those on the show this year, listeners. And the number one position out there in VIX options right now, 233,000 of the Jan 70s. Again, going back to my point from earlier, the 70s are, are just the beginning. We have 75s in March open. We have 80s open in February. We have 80s open in March. I mean, it just, it goes on and on. The quote-unquote garbage is never ending out there this year. Again, the rise of VIX upside. In terms of action from this week, not a ton. Monday was obviously closed. Wednesday, 202,000 contracts. Oh, excuse me, Tuesday, 202,000 contracts. Wednesday, 325. Thursday, 342. And today, like we said, only 167,000 contracts on the tape. So not a ton to break down there. Let's keep rolling with some of our other vol friends out here because we have to get to our end of year fun. SBKX, 2190, down about 1.4 points on the year. No paper to speak of. Sparky, 19 and a half, down about a quarter of a point. Uh, no volume to speak of out there as well. SVIX, weirdly enough, it's at a 1440 right now. It's unchanged. And it yes, just yesterday and coming into today, it was almost literally where it was when it launched on March 30th. It launched at 1480. Remember all the controversy? We thought that would be the story of the year, the return of inverse VIX. End of the year, nobody gives a crap, <laughs> except for Russell. It was at a 1480 when it launched. It's at a 1440 today. So it was almost literally unched on the year after all that Sturm and Drong. 52-week low came on June 10th, 914. The high for the year came on April 4th of 1533. So not that long after it launched, it hit its high for the year and never really looked back. Not a ton of positioning out there as well. The big position, such as it is, 2,300 of the Jan 14 calls. Uh, out to UVIX, everyone waiting for the reverse splits in these. Uh, UVIX is at a six even today, down a tenth of a point. Uh, the volume, 5,700 is the ADV, so that's down about 400. It hit its 52-week low yesterday of 570, so that should tell you where UVIX and UVXY are hanging out. Uh, this one also launched this year on March 30th at 1535, so this one has 
lost a lot of value, as you would expect. 52-week high for the year came on May 9th, 27-21, and the top UVIX position right now, 2,100 of the March 25 calls. Uh, let's get out to UVXY as well. No news yet on the reverse split. It was at a 7 when we kicked off the show. Unched right now. Uh, we're seeing about 75,000 contracts out there. The ADV is about 205. That's down 9,000 from where it was this time last week. So looking a little bit more robust than it was in the past. 52-week low. They hit that yesterday as well, right around six and three quarters. Uh, it started the year at 1181. So obviously it lost a decent amount of value on the year, even though it's not point-wise, it's not as much as we're used to seeing UVXY shed in a year. It actually, if you look at the high for the year, that came on March 7th. That was right around 23 and a half. So from the high to now, it has lost quite a bit of value, uh, but intriguing stuff out there. The top position in UBXY right now, 24,000 of the Jan 10 calls. Let me wind it down with VXX and we'll get Matt's thoughts on any, all of these uh, vol ETPs. VXX 1430 down a 10th of a point, kind of a crappy year for VXX. Barclays washed their hands of it. We washed our hands of it on the show. It's kind of back, but in a much more muted incarnation, uh, only 27,000 contracts on the tape today. It, it kicked off the year at 1790, so it's down about 3.6 points from there. Hit its 52-week low actually yesterday as well, 1391. Uh, so down pretty much four points on the year that was yesterday. Uh, the 52-week high, this is a weird print, 4165. It shows that coming back in March. I can't really confirm that, though, with my other data. So I think that might have been that period when VXX was starting to, let's say, just perform weirdly because I don't know that. I don't know how reliable that print is uh so intriguing stuff nonetheless matt anything catching your eye this year in our panoply of vix etps or i should say really vol etps sir well you know it's the the big thing about these are, are, are the roll downs and so you know where they're having to sell a lower future and buy a higher future and usually you know the the strategy that i that it back tested real well was uh, long VIX puts, long VXX puts. Uh, but that hasn't been working in that well of late uh, in the last three or four months. I, I've had that on. Uh, uh, it looks juicy, but we're just not getting the roll down. So I think that's probably uh, the bigger story just because, you know, it, uh, the the volatility is starting so high and the percentage roll down isn't as great. So you're not seeing um, these decay as quickly. Uh, and reverse split, split as fast. So, I, you know, th that's the uh, that's the thing that I've noticed. My 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 normal strategy of, of uh, long puts in the, the long VIX products uh, have have not been working as well this uh, of, in the last uh, three months or so. And I think that has to do with some of the things that we talked about: the bear market and, and the roll down is not as great uh, in the uh, contango. Uh, so th that that's what I'm seeing, Mark. All right, listeners, it is time to get to it, listeners. In the time we have remaining, it is time to pay off our annual crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, listeners, it's that time of year again. If you get on over to at options on Twitter then you can play along in our question of the week, which will be going into next week. Give you a little time. Everyone's busy for the holidays. We get it. Uh, but we're saying it's that time of year again. Time for everyone to break out their volatility crystal balls and attempt to predict the future. Quite simply, where will VIX close at the end of 2023? And remember, if you want to get entered in the drawing to win fabulous prizes, you can't just vote in the poll. You have to write in your specific predictions. We did this last year, too. And we asked you, quite simply, where will VIX close at the end of 2022? And we gave you four choices last year. Frothy, 15 to 1999. Elevated, 20 to about 25. Very elevated, north of 25. And quiet, below 15. A lot of you picked in the teens. 41.9% chose the 15 to about 20 level. So you expected a close firmly in the teens. And then 28% of you chose below 15. So a lot of you folks thought Vol was just about to create it. And again, coming into the year, it makes some sense. We were hanging out in the teens. We kicked off the year at about a 1630. 
So I think there was probably some recency bias in that voting. We had a bunch of write-ins. Uh, we had uh, our regular listeners' age. He was at 12 and a quarter. He said way below 15. Uh, Neil Wales, one of our regular overseas, he's won some of our crystal ball annual stuff in the past. So he's pretty precise. He said 1468. No joy there. Uh, J4340, he said uh, his prediction was 1326. So he was, everyone was feeling a lot lower. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? A lot of our hosts chimed in. We had the Rock Lobster. He was at 1385 for the end of the year. Uh, no joy there. Jim, the Vixologist, 2320. Uh, he's looking a little bit better than uh, than most of our other <laughs> our other friends. We're at about a 22 even in VIX right now and about a 22 half in spikes right now, listeners. So 2320. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, the flow master, he was at a 19. No joy there. Mr. Overby, similar level, of course, of OPR fame, but he also moonlights on Bob every now and then. He said 1875 for the end of the year. No joy there. MU, Mr. Unlimited, one of our regulars in the chat out there this year, one of our pro members going back a ways. He said 2023, no joy there, unfortunately. Mr. Luigi, my boy Luigi. Haven't seen him live in a while. I know he's been busy. Uh, he says he, he'll have a correction mid-year or first or third quarter. Then we will level out. He said 1650 for the end of the year. So he was looking kind of unched. OQ, options queen. She's been our most prescient picker of all this year. Uh, she was at 1825 at the end of the year. Uh, so no joy for her as well. Let's see, my, my producers will go through all the rest of you who sent in your submissions, listeners. If you were precise, remember, it's got to be a pretty precise bullseye here, then we shall, uh, of course, award fabulous prize. I'm looking here, Matt. I don't see your vol prognostication for last year, so I, I, can't, I can't hoist you on your own petard this year, Mr. Matt, even though you did well in the crystal ball this year, hence your appearance on the final show of the year. So, Mr. Matt... Our question of the week this week, it's going to be a, a threefold question. First off, what are you feeling for Val this time next week, sir? And then, B, by the way, this week, it was me and the meatball last week on the show. I was at 1991. I was flirting with it, but not that great. I was looking better earlier this week. And then, actually, you know, I was at 2036. I take that back. Mark was at 1991. That's his palindromic nonsense again. I was at 2036, so closer, but still no cigar. For either of, the, of us this week. Uh, Mr. Matt, a threefold question for you. First off, where will, where will Val be next week? And then we need you to vote in our poll. Which of these ranges do you think Val will be in at the end of next year? Above 26, 21 to 26, 16 to 21, or below 16? And then thirdly, we need your precise Val prognostication for the end of the year. A threefold question, sir. Yeah, so... Uh... I, I have the 22 puts, so I think it'll, you know, it'll probably close right at 22, so I'll get stymied on that. So I, I'm going to say next week, uh, 22. Um, I think, you know, I think the market's going to go down. The VIX is going to top off again about 40, and, and then it's going to rally into the end of the year. So I think we should be about a 18 and a half. I think it'll be high. The the market will be lower, but rallying. So 18 and a half. So that. Puts me in the what is it, 16 to 21 uh, range, and 18 and a half is my end of year prediction. 18 and a half. Look at you coming armed, ready to go with your prognostication. So Matt went at a 22 next week, 18 and a half for the end of the year. If you folks in the live want to start hitting your end of the years, get them in. Of course, you want to vote on. If you vote here, we'll of course record your votes. If you vote on the Twitter, we'll also record your votes as well. Some people send them in uh, DMs. Some people send them in questions at the optionsinsider.com. They all work, but we'll need to get them within the next week or so to make it fair for everybody. No guessing in June will VIX will be, or November, where VIX will be at the end of the year. That wouldn't quite be fair for anybody. So I'm going to say for this time next week, holiday week, first week of the new year, I might see Val come down a little bit, but not a ton. We're at about a 22 right now. Like I said, so I'm going to say 2145 for next week. And then the end of the year, ooh, I may have to, I may have to hold off on my prognostication just because our poll is still live. And I don't like to give my, give my prognostication until the poll is done because I hate to sway what's going to go on there. We have the poll is live right now. It is pinned at options, but I will definitely give it once the poll is done. I will definitely give my, my prognostication for Val at the end of the year on next week's show, listeners. All right, listeners. That music means 
We have come to the end of another year in volatility. Man, there was so much. We didn't even have a chance to get to everything. By the way, our crystal ball breakdown for the year. I said Matt was our highest ranking guest. He had two crystal balls this year. Mr. Rhodes had one. Uh, Mark S., the meatball, had two. The Rock Lobster had, I believe, I think at least one, maybe two. For some reason, he's not listed here, but he was somewhere in that range. I topped it out with six. Of course, I'm on every show, so I have a little bit of a... I have more bullets to fire out there. Six is not my best year. I think I could do better, but I'll take six, uh, such as it is for the year. So a fun year, listeners. Again, a record year for the network and for volatility views, and it's all because of you folks out there downloading streaming subscribing recommending it on your platform of choice you guys are really the best and gals we love you all out there can't do ball views without you folks and before we go mr matt if folks are intrigued they want to check out what you got cooking in the land of the rats where should they go what should they do oh rats.com is best place to start out uh very exciting we've got a um, more uh, broker connects in our front end. We have, like I said before, that one minute signals so we could alert you if, if the ball's falling, that might indicate a rise in, in the market. Um, and, and we're also putting that in alerts and also into auto trading uh, by about mid year next year. So we have a lot, of, a lot on the flight, great scanners, great data, one minute intraday data that you could hit with an API. So orats.com, you can hit me up at Matt, M-A-T-T, at orats.com too, Mark. Thanks. There you go. Check him out, Matt, at orats.com, or to give him a follow on Twitter, at Option Rats. I'm starting to see uh, the prognostications coming in from our live folks. Now, Option God, 1960 for the end of the year. Uh, Nichols, 2020. Pariah Pants. I like that handle. That's a fun one. Uh, 2212. <laughs> Are your pants a pariah? I don't know. I need to dig into that handle some more. 2212 for the end of the year. Good old Frank 1209, 1870 looks like. No, 20, no, 1870. Yeah. Okay. So keep those getting in. Our producers will record all of those. So if you, if you guess in the live chat today, you will be officially registered there. Uh, Speaking of the live, you folks in the live hang out. We'll pump some fun stuff in there. We got a special treat for you. Uh, Mr. Matt will be back with me in a little bit to finish off the year on options oddity so hang out we'll pump some fun stuff in the live we'll be back in about an hour to talk all things options oddities the rest of you on demand folks that will conclude your broadcast week here and will indeed conclude your broadcast year for us on the network again i want to thank you all we love you all out there we couldn't have had the record year that we did without you folks out there you are really the reason that we do all of this. So stay safe out there. Enjoy a great, happy, fun new year with friends and family. And we'll see you back here next year for more Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about Spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. <laughs>